And I'm going to turn on captioning. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Drupal for Gov's November webinar. And our topic for the month is using automatic lists to build lists for the state of Iowa. And our speakers today are Nikki Flores and Christian Espinola from Lullabot. So before I begin, or before they begin, I want to kind of cover Drupal for Gov items. So we are a community of open source. Uh, in addition to this monthly webinar, we have our yearly conference, which we just had a few weeks ago in Bethesda, Drupal GovCon. We also do global training days and half days and the global summit at DrupalCon North America. If you're interested in doing a webinar or have any questions about getting involved or presenting, um, please reach out to us via email at drupalforgov at gmail.com. We're also available on Slack and LinkedIn. And I have to thank our sponsors because without our sponsors, we would not be able to pull all of this off. So thanks to Angelina. Um, they provide web and digital support services. And also thank you to ThinkDrop. Um, they are also um, a web development and engineering consulting firm um, who handle enterprise level websites. Some Drupal goodness. Um, in addition to this webinar, there are also other things going on, right? So if, if you're a lover of conferences, um, check out this list of conferences that we have. And you can also check out um, events that are listed on drupal.org events page. Also, if you're interested or you work with an organization or agency that has the space to host a half day or multi-day Drupal GovCon event, please reach out to us. We're always looking to have our events in various locations and spaces. And if you miss a webinar, we record these um, on YouTube and we also list them on our website. However, our website is currently undergoing a redesign so that page is in there. So check out the YouTube channel and you all of our videos are uploaded there. And last but definitely not least, um, I wanna introduce Nikki Flores. She's a technical project manager at Lullabot, a certified scrum master and a certified technical project manager. And then Christian Espinola, um, who's a software engineer at Lullabot. Um, welcome and thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing so that you can take control. Great, it's so great to be here. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to be sharing my screen. And also, you can use the link at the top if you'd like to follow along on our slides. Please do. Maybe give me a thumbs up if you can see that. Or you can use the QR code. Can everybody see the slides? Just want to double check. Yeah, OK, great. And today is November 16th, 2023. It is me and Christian. We wanted to just make sure that folks knew we would like to follow the Drupal Code of Conduct, which you can find at drupal.org slash DCOC. I will put that here into the chat. And Nika's going to help us with getting any questions or comments or feedback, or if you want to go into depth or we'll have a demo at the end of this and you can also ask questions directly. So please do feel free to think of this as a gathering of peers. Christian and I love what we do, love solving tough problems, and we're excited to be here. So the way that this presentation will go, I am assuming we'll have about 10 minutes to talk to you about the current team and about the project. Then we'll have about 10 minutes to go through kind of the rationale about the end users, about the uh, website, the website authors, people who are creating content. We'll have 20 minutes to do the demonstration. So we'll go into the back end and you can help us, you know, ask your questions about how it's automatic listen listing pages work. 
discuss pros and cons, and then uh, as much time as needed for question and answer to round it out. Does that sound like a plan? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Great. All right, so I can start by telling you a little bit about our team. So Christian and I work at Lullabot. We have started this project in August of 2022. So it's been, was it just 2022? Oh yes, it's been a, it's been a year. <laughs> it's been a quite an adventure with the state of Iowa. We were first contracted by the Office of the Chief Information Officer and we came on board to help them bring the very first couple of their sites, which is the governor's office, governor.iowa.gov, and then their main landing page, iowa.gov, to fruition in January of this year, January 8th of 2023. And so we are currently in a more of a mature part of the phase, but when we first started, we had 15 people on the team, we had surge with multiple people on the team and I'll just walk through who we had and I would like to take a moment to remember Hawkeye Tenderwolf our developer senior developer who we lost um he passed away unexpectedly last month this time last month so here's just a picture everything starts with the people right folks there's no way you can get any project done there's no way you can fix any kind of hard project unless you have good people so kind of moving from the top most down on our top left, we have Brian Skyron, he's our president. We had two technical architects, here's Andrew Berry and Nate Lampton, their Deviant Integral and Quick Sketch on your Drupal.org. Greg Dunlap is our main content strategist. We had Jared Ponchat as our design director and Darren Peterson as our director of client services. And then we also have a whole Lullabot support and maintenance team, which is here on the far right. I won't go into everybody, but at our bulk, at our biggest, we've had three content strategists, two designers, three technical project managers, a whole cadre of developers, including the four that you see on this row. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I'm on the third row here. That's Christian with the orange t-shirt, Betty, Matt Cleave, and Hawkeye. And then underneath, we had a number of front-end developers. On the far left, you'll see our Iowa stakeholders. There's a variety of product owner, project manager, and project sponsors. And then we also had QA resources. We are hosting the site on Pantheon. We're using GitHub and Jira. And then as mentioned on our far right, we have Mel Briscoe, our technical project manager on the Lullabot support and maintenance side, and a number of developers to support with that. Again, Nikki Flores, Christian, uh, we can be found on our handles throughout the internet. It's Monica Deer for me, Penn Studio for him. And in this project, my role is as a project manager and Christian says as a senior developer. Christian, do you want to just take a moment to say hello and hi to everybody? Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and he's here to help me with backup uh, for those of you who have technical questions. As mentioned, we'll go through the demo to begin. All right, so about the project. So this is a state of Iowa sponsored project. As mentioned, it started in August of 2022. The whole point of the project is for standardization and consolidation. So I don't know what it's like at your organization, but state of Iowa has multiple agencies. So for example, Department of Natural Resources, Department of Revenue, Department of Transportation, Department of Health and Human Services. And up until that point, the agencies had all operated independently. So they had maybe some blanket contracts with their web providers, but they would organize their websites individually. They would organize additional fields, additional views, additional features individually, contract directly with the provider, and then implement that. And part of the process for this was the governor's directive to be efficient, to save money, to have standards across the board and to consolidate resources so that everybody's working off of one platform. So again, from August, 2022 to January of this year, we built out probably four or five of the main content types as well as some micro content. Did the theme, implemented using continuous integration, GitHub Actions onto Pantheon and launched with the two sites in January. Up until this point, it's now November, we are on site number 22. We just launched the Health and Human Services site this morning. 
And the process has been definitely an adventure. And one of the ways that we think we've been able to support the auditors, uh, sorry, the authors is by using automatic lists and listing pages rather than having a wide variety of say views. The metrics that the state is using are high quality content, uh, using a tool called Moncito to basically understand that the content is good and also that it's been reduced. So many agencies were using their website as kind of a filing cabinet and they want the information to actually be useful to the end user. So it's not as necessary to have minutes from the board meeting in 2007. It's much more necessary to have user focused content. Accessibility scores across the board have to be over 83 in Lighthouse. And reading level, they're asking for eighth grade. Again, as mentioned, we use a single code base to push to all these websites. We use Jira to manage our tickets. We have Drupal 10 and we're on the Pantheon platform. Okay, and who, who actually is using this? So the state of Iowa users are using this. They are saying it's residents and constituents. And I'm asking you to think about scenarios, the people, right? So my thought process of how somebody is using this that we've had borne out by our analytics is, for say example, the Department of Corrections, a parent may be trying to find out how to send funds to their loved one who's incarcerated, right? So they're looking for Department of Corrections, Iowa, which prison, how do you send fun, funds or mail or packages or whatever. Another example is Department of Veteran Affairs. So this is the Iowa Veterans Home, Department of Veterans Affairs, and all of the mental health services, health services, education resources, housing assistance, all of that consolidated into one agency. Let's talk about a really dire example. Let's say a mom is in the parking lot on their phone, on their mobile device, trying to fill out the form to access a special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, WIC stamps, right? So let's say I need that. I'm on my limited battery. I have, I need an accessible site that's not a PDF. Or I need to fill in a form on my little phone and submit it. I need stuff to be at my fingertips. So just thinking about all those different scenarios, there's two others that I had on my list, Department of the Blind. Let's say it's a school and they're seeking braille resources for a student who's coming into their system. They need to find those. And same with seniors. A great example is if you are looking to retire or you're ready for Medicare services, you're eligible at 65 in, this, in the country. Um, and in the state of Iowa, you may be searching for an upcoming seminar. So I invite you to take a look at dxtraining.iowa.gov. And this is here a link directly in the chat to the sites that are currently on the platform that is, hasn't yet been updated with everybody, but that is the list of types of agencies that you can click around. And then another, end user really is the author. I wanted to discuss a little bit about who our authors are. So the authors are each of the individual public information officers for the agency. Not all agencies have a formal like website authoring crew, right? For some of the smaller agencies, it will be a subject matter expert. And when we did our onsite, some of these subject matter experts, for example, two attorneys, doing legal work are given administrative access to the Drupal site. It's very frightening and anxiety provoking for some people. So our idea was that it's a variety of Drupal experience, a variety of web editing experience, and a real wide variety of people comfortable with the web. We are also offering lots of media, lots of YouTube, Vimeo, ArcGIS, Data and Insights, formerly Tyler Technologies, Tableau, Google Calendar, Embeds, lots of rich media. And then as a note for the types of authors, the roles that they hold, we only allow writers who basically submit a node for consideration, say a press release or a basic page. We have editors, an editor can edit their own content as well as other content. And each of this is additive. So everybody can do the thing above them. An editor can edit and write. A publisher, somebody who holds the role of publisher, can hit the publish button 
and that page will go live on the live website. And then we have agency managers. Agency managers, there's only about two per agency and they manage site specific settings like the color palette or hooking the site up to Google Tag Manager or Google Search Console. We do not allow administrators. This is an interesting change, right? We don't have an admin level role on any of the websites. Everybody uses exact same tooling. Everybody's using the same exact same platform. There's no variation between agency. So the ideas are moving away from an individualized approach and more toward a enterprise-wide, this is how you do it on the DX platform, the digital transformation platform. We also use Okta to handle login. Okay, so any, any questions so far? That concludes our setup and intro to the site so far. We're ready to move into the demo. And then maybe Christian, did I miss anything? No, I think you cover everything. All right, so I am going to pull up again. I, do you see my my screen where I'm walking through these slides, or you just see my? Yeah, yeah, and we see your course. Uh, it's so it's so strange. Okay, so I'm going to just go through a couple of scenarios of how this looks like, and just for the background, the live site I will drop in so you can see, but I'm going to be demoing on something called Tugboat. So Lullabot does have a internal tool where we can, we call it tugboat.qa. You can sign up with your GitHub account. It's free for individual sign up to test. We basically spin up the site, pull the database from the latest last night's backup from Pantheon and pre-seed the content on this tugboat environment so we can test it against our pull requests and not necessarily touch live content. So I'm going to go through a couple different examples of how automatic lists work. So first of all, here's the governor's website. This section here is a fairly common use of news. So if you can imagine, in the last couple of days, the governor's office has issued statements, so press releases, right? And so what this tool does, this automatic list version, is it pulls the most recent featured news item, sorry, it takes the most recent news item, places on the left, and then takes the last two and puts it on the right. There's a more link, which then pulls you to the list of all available news. Now, just a question for the group, how would you build this on your own site today? Like, feel free to drop it in the chat if you have access to the chat. Like, I would build a view, you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't we all just build a view? Here's a view of a newsroom, paginated, we put the title, we put a little bit of summary. Exactly, 100%. I'm glad we're talking to developers here. You would build views. Okay, but what's the problem when we have, as mentioned, a bunch of, say, people who don't know Drupal, who are gonna start messing with views, putting in new fields, putting in new fields onto their news content type, making edits. Now we don't have a unified system that we can have control over and deploy. We're deploying twice a week, like no views, no views on the site, sorry. No admin, no views, tough. So here's what it looks like on the back end. Again, I'm showing you a uh, tugboat environment of how we have done this. So we've split out the automatic lists as what we call micro content. The micro content, there's many different types of micro content that we offer. So for example, a promo has a call to action, has an image and some text. And here's an example of a promo on the homepage of the governor's site. A promo is always an image, some text and a call to action, right? A link or a link collection, a link goes into a visual link collection and there's also a link collection list. This is a link collection list. It's basically just a list, a listing, a, li a collection of links, link collection list. So this featured news, if we do our search for a featured news, is a automatic list, okay? And I'll, I'll pull it up in here. It's an automatic list. Here's the title, featured news. We could have some descriptive text if we needed. And we basically extrapolated the views so that you can choose from the list of available major content types and pull what you want. Now, tell me, I know on Google Meet, sometimes it won't show the dropdown. Do you see my dropdown that has basic pages, contacts, events? How do I? Yeah, it's, it's visible. 
Yeah, okay. So in this case, we are saying we want to show news in a featured format. We are showing all news types. We're using taxonomy to handle the news types, but the, each agency ships with two existing, and this one is ex just, yeah, straight up news or press release. News is like external news, and press release is something that the governor's office has created. In this particular automatic list, they're only showing any news item, no constraints. And then the more link, this is to go to a page called newsroom, which is, let's see, it's a listing page, another listing page, which we'll also take a look at with the link text, see all news. So here's what it looks like on the home. Here's the see all news with a link to the left. And then this is the featured news. And what's great about the featured news is it just works DM. So I'm telling it, just show me it in featured news format, press save. And then here on my landing page, which I will go to from here, if I needed to place that featured news box somewhere, I could do it on any landing page. So let me build you a landing page. Let's say here I have an, another landing page and I wanted to put that featured news, that same exact micro content node into here. I could use the layout tab. And again, we're doing layout builder. We've We've centralized on Layout Builder. In this case, I would say, go ahead and add a section, add a block, and do use that automatic list. I know I've already created it, okay? I'm gonna add that automatic list. Now, in some cases, you can create that on the fly. Let's say I needed to create something here. I would just create it, like choose which type of automatic list I wanted, what more link and press save. But because I am encouraging the authors to pre-build their things, I'm telling them just use what you already have. Insert the block. And now that featured news has been placed automatically onto this listing page. And it could be placed almost anywhere that I allow this micro content to be placed, okay? So one more time, the featured news item is its own instance. It's its own node, which has its own editable features. I could call it featured news from the governor. And when I change it here, it'll change in all places. I could change the link to be see all news today, the more link text. If I do that in the one node, 696, then it will appear on both the places where that was placed. That automatic list was placed on this and see all news today, future news from the governor. And it'll also be changed on the homepage where we also placed it. So this idea of structured content of only one instance of the automatic list, and then it perpetuates. Okay, so let's play around a little bit with some variations. So the DOC, which is the Department of Corrections, has a variation of this. They also like it, but their automatic list of recent news is in a different format. And these were de defined against our designers' wishes and with the state in multiple variations of how the automatic list can display. So this is an automatic list, same as what we had. If you remember, featured news has three and the most recent at the top. The alternate version of recent news has a fixed number that they specify. In this case, they said four, and this cur currently appears in a different format. It still has the title, it still has the more link. Okay, so we'll take a look at that as well. Inside our DOC, same thing, I would go to my micro content, I would go look for whatever micro content was available. In this case, I can search by all of the available automatic lists. And in this recent news, we have the title, same as what we had before. We have a more link, same as what we had before. In this case, they're saying, show me just regular news, not featured news. If I wanted to search it to featured, I could like right now and it'll change. In this case, show me all the featured. We have a variety of displays. In this case, we're just gonna choose the automatic listing in teaser format and we're asking for four. In this case, they've also asked it to only show uh, specific topic, and this is a taxonomy term that is organized by the agency manager. They can handle different types of taxonomy terms to organize their work. And then same thing here, not additional filters, but just show me specific topics. Okay, so there's four. And again, here it is again on the live, there's four. So some changes we could do on the fly. Let's change it to be six. 
we offer between two and six. And let's just see what that changes. In this case, the automatic list, when it gets updated to six, shows six, still in that format. And then another option is for us to display it as just titles. So this is, again, pre-built variants that we've given to the authors in order to allow them to build kind of like a views, but not views. So it's constrained, but it has a little bit more flexibility. Let's say that our DOC, Department of Corrections public officer, you know, basically doesn't like this version at all. They want to go back to featured views. No problem. Switch the automatic list instance, node 233, to the featured version. Everything else remains the same. All of the options relevant kind of go away because it's not relevant. Save changes now on the home page that goes back to that featured version, which has the most recent on the left and the two. If there's an image, then the image will display as expected. So here, I'm just going to grab an image and place it so we can convince ourselves of this. Choose a file, a uh, rainbow file, text, caption, save, insert, save changes. And now, since I, as the editor, have just created a brand new news item and updated the image, then on my recent news, sorry, bear with me here. It's going to have that image displayed to the right size. It'll put it on the far left. And imagine that would be a person's picture for the DLC. And then all the same here. If I needed to change it back to being a regular news item, it would take it and basically cut, crop, and confirm. And now it's going to go back to six now, one, two, three, four, oh, four, and then the most recent. Okay, questions? I feel like this is so great. And yeah, so this is the other part of it. The listing page aspect of it is a variant of the automatic listing. And it follows the same behavior. So in this case, this is a new kind of content type. It is, you know, if we're working with the authors to build a new listing page, we tell them, go ahead and add content. We are using type tray. I see your question. We tell them, OK, if you're trying to build a listing page, it's an automatic and curated list of content. And this listing page happens to be called Newsroom. It happens to have a short title, which helps with the path auto and with the menu. And we're telling it, same thing as automatic list. We're telling it, show us all news. In this case, we're offering 20 in a linked title format. And we are including filters. And this is what that looks like. Node 696 looks like a newsroom page. And we can do the same variants. We can take away the filters. We can, sorry, let me just take away the filters. Let's do 10. Let's show, you know, I won't, I won't constrain it, but here is the same sort of newsroom, but 10 now, no filter, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 and then paginated automatically. So from the perspective of that kind of basic Drupal user, they have a lot of flexibility with how can they can build a page. OK, question. First question. Yay, Dwayne. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty interesting. Um, So you don't, so there's no admins that can get to, or no user role that, that edits any of the views. So nope, at nope. all? Only writers, editors, publishers, agency managers. No one has access to views. We don't have views. Uh, okay. We we don't have an ability to create, edit, or add a view. And neither do we allow folks the ability to create, add, or edit new taxonomy terms. Sorry, oh, wow. new new sorry new vocabularies. So an right. editor an editor can indeed create new terms inside. So like let's just say I needed to do another one called podcasts right? Mm -hmm. So here I am, that's my podcast. And then the next time I want to build an automatic list, I want to say, okay, only show me the news that are podcasts. And then inside, you know what I mean? I would build the automatic list to be constrained to only podcasts, and then it would only pull that in that little constraint. So it does pretty much everything that we would do with the views, but it has one layer removed for the author so that they're not dealing with views. 
Okay. So a lot of, so you create the custom content type with a lot of template overrides that does the same thing as what you said. Uh, yeah. Christian, maybe Christian, a template override. I mean, so I, I'm just curious because I mean, that looks very similar. You just, for me, you know, you're like creating, um, you created a view, but you just don't give them access to that, that interface. So I'm just curious to know how that was, or if you could tell me. Um, yeah, yeah. And it is his strength. So this does not like function beyond anything like this. So all agency authors have access to be able to create a listing page, but they're fixed. So we don't allow, for example, currently a listing page of promos, right? That's not uh, available as an option. These are the fixed lists and every single agency will have exactly the same right. fixed list of available items. I will show you, I've only showed you pages, uh, sorry, news items. Let's just take a real quick look at how this can be extended just a little bit more, okay? And then we can go into it. That more of the details. So here right. on the BO Board of Parole is very interested in sharing about the upcoming clemency hearings, and each of these has a uh, time and a date associated with it. So it, it, this is exactly the same as what I had just talked about. We have a uh, automatic list. We have the automatic list that is connected to. Okay, bear with me here. You can see some of our secret sausage. The automatic list has. In this case, it's called hearings and interviews. It has a more link to another listing page. And then it pulls by date the upcoming events. Okay, so by start date. So going into our automatic list, again, we go to content, we look at our micro content, search by automatic list, find that specific hearings and interviews automatic list. We check and see what's happening with it. In this case, it's events showing as a linked title, six per block. And it's, here's the more link to hearings and interviews. So just as an example, let's make it four per block and our other variant on this is as a teaser format, okay? So now when I've done, again, not super user views, not a ton of availability for changing things, only what we've given them, but there's still enough variation that they can feel like they have autonomy and an ability to change things out. So when we did that, we've done four, We've changed it. Did I just change? I'm getting confused with all my items. So now there's four, same link, uh, just in a slightly different format. Now, this can be expended, extended even more. So as I mentioned, we have documents, uh, we have pages, we have locations and contacts, and then we have some downstream instances. So here's an example from IPIB, which is Public Rulings Board. They needed to have basic pages. These are all a variant of a basic page, but they're sorted using taxonomy as a contested case. And they have multiple types of listing pages. So for example, declaratory orders is exactly the same, but each of these basic pages have been constrained to be listed as declaratory orders. Same with advisory opinions. So these are all basically variants on the same theme, but they all have the same basic layout. The only thing changing is what it's constrained by. And I think I had this open here. Let's just take a look. As mentioned, it's a listing page. This is a listing page now, very similar to automatic lists. It's, um, it's just a long listing page now. Link title, 20 pages, include the filter. And here, only show me a certain topic. So those were the different types that I showed. And if I needed to, I could go ahead and in my taxonomy terms of topics, expand that. So let's say they have a new staff person, they have a new type, they could add their term of um, you know, governmental agenda, something like that. And then that becomes then available to them when they're editing the listing page itself that becomes yet another opportunity for them to constrain their listing page of basic pages to that topic. In this case, let's do that. What do we expect will happen? I've constrained this page to only be government orders. Nothing's been connected to that, right? Because none of our basic pages have that um, tag. 
But the minute somebody does do a tag for that, uh, let's just convince ourselves of that. The minute somebody creates the basic page and adds that topic, then it will show on that on that section. So here's a basic page that's already in formal complaints. I'm going to add our new topic of called governmental agenda to it. And then in my listing page that I've already built, that one will show. That's the page. OK, question from the team, uh, Mahesha. How easy to create a new vocabulary and tag it to content type if the need comes in? OK, so this is exactly our issue. We do not have an ability for anybody who's the agency manager, as you can see here, I'm logged in as an agency manager. They cannot create a new taxonomy vocabulary. OK, we did have a problem with this. Somebody did create a new vocabulary and messed up our GitHub Actions push to the live site because they're like, we're expecting you know, this many and you have this many. They can create new terms inside the vocabulary. And that's why we offer the variety of stubs that you can use in a listing page to constrain your work. So here on pages, there's an opportunity to constrain by topic. If you're doing it, for example, for um, documents, you could constrain it by just if I'm going to do a listing page of documents, document listing, I can constrain it by whatever we say is available to documents, its topics, and document types. So we do have a document type here. The document type is only affiliated with like PDFs. And if I needed to, I could add another term, tag it to the content already tied and then build my listing page off of that. Does that answer your question? We could do it a couple times so we can understand it. But again, as I'm building a new term inside topics or in each of the content types, like for example, an event has event types associated with it. So if I knew that there's always a clemency hearing, and I always want to build a list of events that are of type clemency hearing, then I could use that to build that list. Here's the event version of that that pulls, let's just convince ourselves, that pulls from the event type. Awesome. Yeah. I know it's it's like a it's a next level thinking. It's an order higher of otherwise we would just be building all the views that we want, right? We would just be building view after view after view. OK, just a few more, and then we can go into additional. So this is an example of our downstream effect. So this is a listing page. This is a live listing page for seniors who are retiring, and they want to find an upcoming event that's near them, right? So this is a listing page of events. Let's just look at it. This is a listing page of events. But each event, we've used a reference field so here I'll show you, this is a listing page of events. It has the title. We've included the opportunity to add a map for any event that has a location attached. So here is the listing page without the map at the top. It just becomes like what you saw on the border parole. It's just a list of upcoming events. But in this case, because this is very much tied to where the end user lives, we have opted in a map. And as you can imagine, Christian has big plans for this. We might want to put an RSS feed. We might want to put some other stuff onto it as an attachment. It's just a views attachment for those of you familiar with views. Now we've added a map. Um, and again, bear with us. We're not on the live site. You can see it on the live site. Since we've added the map, the map will pull from any location that's been attached to an event. So here, this event is start date, end date. It has some summary. It has an all day reference. It may have a physical location associated with it. If the physical location is taken away, then it just becomes a regular event. And it'll show on that listing page of events, like what we would expect. But it would not have, let's do it, find resources somewhere. It wouldn't have a location associated with it. Does that make sense? So everything is connected through reference fields. And then only the items that have attached information will show on the maps. 
So our content type, one more time, it's hard to envision, but when you have content, we have a fixed number of major content types, we call them, and the listing pages are created for basic pages, for contacts, a contact is a person, for events, which is like, you know, an event, for how do I, which is an instructional list, like how do I sign up for my commercial driver's license? We can do a listing page of locations and we can do a listing page of views. Those are the available options for us. Okay, one last one. Oh, it's already 341. This is a listing page of docs. So this is the one that doesn't pull from the basic page or major content types. It actually pulls from the media library. So in this case, it behaves the same. We have a, oops, that's a login, a listing page of documents. The documents themselves also have content uh, type, they have document types associated with them. So here is the live site, here is our other site. Here's the listing page itself. And we're asking it to show us all documents. It's also asking, we're also asking it to show us documents with the linked title. Let's just play around with this and do a teaser and do further so we can convince ourselves. And then here we are asking it to sort alphabetically and include filters. We can take that off and it'll just become a straight up documents list. So here's an example. I've linked in the chat to the live and then here's our conversion that we just did. Right, so this is kind of like more recent things in a different format, but basically built the same, pulling from PDFs. And then again, this is a PDF. The PDFs are handled inside the media library and these are just handled as straight up documents. So monthly work production would be here in my documents. Uh, document is considered a PDF or a Excel file or something like that. And again, I'm showing you on the tugboat, so some of the images are broken, but on the live site, this is where this would be where we could then sort. So as you can imagine, I'll stop sharing for just a moment. As you can imagine, almost all of the main types of content that people would have to show on a regular basis, including but not limited to upcoming events, latest news, latest documents, including board meetings, agendas, publications, press releases, we have the ability to sort basic pages by type. We have the ability to sort listings of locations or listings of contacts. Let's say, show me all contacts for WIC, for the Department of Health and Human Services, or a listing page of all locations. That would be, you know, show me every single location available to me from the Department of Health and Human Services. All of that is possible without an admin, without views, without ability to change out content types, add fields, or you know, key on fields, they can just simply use the tooling that Christian built so they can turn on or off very common options. Here's the most recent, again, this just went live, like what, two, three hours ago? This is a listing page of locations. And then if I needed to, I could sort by only WIC locations. And then there's, um, I wanna say there's, there's WIC, is sorted for this particular state by uh, county. And that's what we've built into our location field as areas served. So here we have a great example. That listing page could be constrained to WIC locations or it could be constrained by county. We could also do anything for that county. Um, and then maybe build a listing page of counties and link to these. So there's lots, lots, lots that we can play with here. I wanted to, yeah, again, thank the team, thank Christian, and open it up to additional questions. That's the end of my prepared remarks. Oh, oh, one more, one more. So in terms of the pros and cons, um, again, why not views? I know every developer is like, why don't you just buy a view? So views are very good. And in terms of pro, they're customizable. You can add new fields. They're very flexible. But the con of using views or allowing views is that it will be expensive over time. Let's say HHS wants view number one, 
but Department of Corrections wants view number two, the Department of Board, uh, Board and Parole wants view number three. Now there's not as much easy for everybody to use the same type. They're difficult to maintain, so the web developer has to contact switch and be available to each of those agencies to change it out. And of course, there's no cross-pollination. In this case, Department of Education is coming on board, but they wouldn't know about all these other types of views because they would have to start fresh from their own. Um, the perspective of automatic lists and listing pages as a feature, the pro is a standardized. We do have some variation. Agency authors can do what they want, but there is a controlled display. But yes, the cons, the very bottom quadrant here is that it is inflexible. No agency administrators, no ability to create new vocabularies. You can do terms, but not vocabularies. And you can't build your very own special, special, special variation. Instead, what we're asking them to do is bring that back to the Office of the Chief Information Officer. Because for example, if they have a need for something, it's quite possible one of the other agencies would like to use the same. So great example, we just got an email yesterday. They don't want a maximum of six on the automatic list. They would like to expand that to maybe seven or 10. And that would be a request we bring back to the content strategist, back to the designer. Is this something we can do? And if it's approved, prioritized, then it brings forward back into development. And then everybody on the platform, all 22 agency websites can now use automatic lists up to that amount. So it's a virtuous cycle. It is something that we've had a learning curve with all the developers, with the editors, with OCIO, and it's something that we're, we're very proud of. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and see some of these questions uh, and I'll stop sharing. Did we do any UX testing? So John, she says, do we do any UX testing before launching the site? How did users interact with the site? Um, in terms of testing, we are using the Lighthouse for accessibility testing. In terms of users, we did do a first round of how to build it. We would ask from the users themselves, like what types of fields they might need and what types of displays. As you saw with some of the variations of displays are very much from the user's perspective. Um, in terms of how did users interact with the site and users, if you look at any iowa.gov website, we're only, uh, I would say, a quarter of the way through. So most of the sites on the platform to date, I will find one for you, are using completely customized views. So users prior to the conversion to the platform are doing their, their own thing, straight up their own thing. And that's, again, as I mentioned, costly and ineffective for, for the state to be able to consolidate. Is this something that I, oh, does that answer your question, John? So Iowa DNR yes, is, a, yeah, Iowa DNR is a great example. They're next, almost next on our list. This is iowadnr.gov. So there is a phishing atlas that I love uh, it's like a fish finder, and we just will not be able to accommodate this because it's extremely customizable and it's built with views, and we don't have that capacity. It's not something that is going to carry over to other agency websites. So when they switch, some of these are going to be switched out. Uh, I will get you the link. Yeah, here's a, a sample of fish finder. I knew this question would come. Is this something that I could implement? I assume this is involved a custom module. So Christian, do you want to address that? Yeah, uh, sorry, my webcam broke. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, so this is a custom module, uh, but uh, I can explain a bit how we build that. Uh, so first of all, thanks to Marcos Cano, who started this. And, and his idea was using the block fill module, which allows you to, to embed uh, a block uh, as a field into uh, uh, any content type. So we created a listing page content type. So it's a node. And then we added this uh, a, a listing field, which is a field block. And in this field block, like Nikki said that we are not using views. We are using views we just don't expose that to editors. So what we do is that internally we build uh, the different views that we want them to allow to select. 
and those can be selected in this field uh, block as a, so we restrict the blocks that they can select in this field block field and if you can think when when you add a, a new uh, block uh, in your structure page you go and add a new block and you have created a view that provides a block uh, there you can override the number of uh, elements that you want to show so what we do is using the same mechanic we expanded the block uh, view display this might be technical sorry uh, so in drupal you have the most used view displays are a page so you can create a page with views and a block so we created our own block which is a listing page block and there we expanded that so we allow more options we don't only allow, uh, allow to override uh, the number of items but we also allow to override which display would be will be used uh, if there are any attachments we we we, we allow them to to select if they want those attachment or not. If they have any uh, filters, we allow to we allow them to override that, and we allow them to override any contextual filters. Uh, so in this way, uh, we are exposing that to the editors in a more controlled way. And then uh, on when we on the on our block display build, so when the actual page is rendered, we look at the options that the editor choose and we can use the views API for switching those. So we can override which display will be used based on the options and anything. So everything is stored in this field. And then we use that information when we render uh, the view. So most of the, most of the magic, <laughs> it's, it's a block field model and views itself. It's a great solution because I know with a lot of government um, agencies, they do want these like dynamic lists and the flexibility to create. So nice job. It would yeah. be it would be lovely if it was a contributor module. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. We've discussed it. We've discussed it, and I would say just thinking about it, it's basically a like a layer that sits on top of views, right? It's sitting on top. So we're building the views from them. They can basically pick from the listing page of events, the listing page of documents, the listing page. And they only have a few options, variants. I don't know, do you think we can share? I'm, I'm reluctant to share client data, but um, I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll take screenshots and add it back to the presentation so you can see. But our idea is that we have given them flexibility to use views, but we put tons of guardrails on top of it. And then if a new content type should become available, we would add that to the listing of page availability. We determine, predetermine the variants, predetermine the filters, and they can pick and choose from that. And that will build the, the shell on top of the view. So yeah, it is views, you're right, Christian, but it's not views. <laughs> So Anna, I'm gonna take a couple of pictures with Christian's permission and we'll just get back to the team and make sure we can share. But I, I know this is something that we were talking early on, our director of technology was saying, why don't you make this a contrib module? And we were like, yeah, it's not quite there yet. It's not quite there. Other questions that folks have? Um, I see one, um, Is I don't know if you answered this one from Mahesha. Um, DX training is available as open source. For community to use? Is it built only for Iowa.gov? You know, it is built for only for Iowa.gov, but it is a public site. It's not hidden behind firewall. If you want to look and see behind the scenes, there's videos of or screen caps of each of the different content types. And then of course you can look at any Iowa.gov site. I know all of us love to problem solve. So if you just go look at the governor's website or Iowa.gov or any of the sites that are live, you can probably deduce we do have a fixed number of content types and we have a fixed number of micro content so there is really no surprises as to what's available to site users and 
I actually tell our agencies when they're first coming on board to the platform to look at their peer agencies and try and see how would they build something like a home page. So I think the only major distinction is that our regular content is everything that's a basic page, et cetera, always has a right-hand sidebar. But the landing page is the only page that's a little bit different in that it's the only one that uses Layout Builder. And so the landing page is special and it's usually only for the home page or for major content pages. But everything else is a straight up basic page or some other very understandable type of content. I know everybody on this call has built one or more of each of these. And they're just as you can imagine, a location has an address field right and some typing on it and some hours uh contact has a contact type on it a first name a last name a phone number these are all very very straightforward and most likely you could iterate on this it's just the listing page functionality that's slightly different and a great thing about the listing page functionality is also that any node created as a micro content automatic list can then be placed on any of the landing pages. So as you can imagine, you start getting a listing page of event or an automatic list of events on the home page or this a list of the upcoming news or recent news on the home page. And I think maybe another showcase site to look at would be the workforce.iowa.gov website. They do quite a lot of usage, workforce.iowa.gov. They have lots and lots and lots of versions of all of this. There's Tableau, there's statistics, there's, this is just like you saw, this is looks like a automatic list of announcements. This is visual link collection. This is the listing collection, link collection list, but in a card format. We have variants on all of these. So each of the sites on the DX platform are slightly different, but have enough variation to keep it fresh and interesting for folks but it's not rocket science. Yeah, for sure, it's very manageable. Is there, uh, there's a question from above. Is there any need or mechanism to share, for example, a news article or event listing to multiple sites? So that was discussed, uh, an idea of using potentially RSS feeds to, um, the great example is iowa.gov has how do I's and iowa.gov has the kind of the source information but for example, somebody at the Department of Transportation, they have some updated content and they might want to have the canonical how to apply for a new driver's license. And then that gets pushed back to Iowa.gov. So they're still in discussion of how they would handle who is the owner of a particular type of information. And we are indeed planning on bringing every Iowa State Agency website onto the DX platform. So yes, that's the end goal of this project. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. I know folks have to drop to their next meeting. We really appreciate the time. Yeah, you can reach you. out. Yeah, Penny Skeeto or Monica Deer will answer your questions. Good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right, take care. Happy holidays, too. See everybody next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, thanks.